which will deliberate upon matters that are distinct and pertinent to specific regions hosting the sittings. Unlike outreaches, the deliberation during this sitting will culminate in two parliamentary resolutions and will require government action. We have money that is always available for outreaches. And in these outreaches, we could only go and invite the leaders of the area and we discuss with the leaders of the areas. But this case we said, instead of calling only the leadership of the area, let's go and have a sitting in that specific region, get issues that are affecting the region, have resolutions, and forward it to executive for action to be taken in a particular area. When you look at the budget of parliament, no money was added for this sitting. So the misinformation, the people who are moving with the misinformation just don't like the northern region. Parliament is not a stationary building. The building in Kampala is not parliament. It is an arm of government that can convene in any part of the country. And this is not unique with the legislature. It is also being done with the judiciary. And this is prescribed under Article 95.2 of the Constitution that the speaker shall proclaim at any one time where parliament should sit. And where parliament is, is where the speaker is. And where the speaker proclaims and that this will be parliament. So this perception of saying parliament must always sit in Kampala is being selfish. The next time we can sit anywhere, we can even proclaim the middle of Kampala Road to be parliament and we shall sit. A people-centered parliament must be responsive to the needs of the citizens or, or else society will be without effective parliamentary representation. Remember our role as parliament is one representation, legislation, appropriation, and oversight. The 11th parliament, right from inception in 2021, vowed to put the people at the center of the legislative process and its decisions. That is why we are taking parliament to the people. We have brought parliament to the people. We don't want people to come to parliament. We have brought it to the people. Legally and procedurally, the regional sittings of parliament are anchored in Article 95 of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda, 1995, where not, some of us were not even there, but they understood that at one time we would decide to sit in Gulu, sit in Mbarara, Masaka, and it is also prescribed under Rule 17 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, which empowers the Speaker to convene Parliament at such a place and time through a proclamation, which proclamation we have already done. You may recall that at the start of the today's sitting, that proclamation was done, and it has always been done. That's why we always sit in Koloro. It is the same legal basis upon which Parliament sits in Koloro, under the ceremonial grounds, and Kampala Serena Hotel. In any case, Gulu, where we are holding the historic sitting, is part of Uganda. 
and therefore no one in their own right mind of state of mind can attempt to deprive the beloved people of northern Uganda the opportunity of the landmark sitting. And I, how I pray that those who are saying they, they boycott do not come to Gulu or to the greater north when it is only campaign time. Honorable members, this is the first of the planned four regional sittings that Parliament will host in the financial year. In the second quarter, we shall go to another region. The next sitting will be communicated where we shall be sitting. It can either be in the east, western, or central. At all these regional sittings, Parliament will prioritize matters of urgent and utmost importance to the specific regional, to the specific region where we are hosting the sitting. Honorable members and the local community from northern Uganda will confirm that over the last few weeks, various parliamentary committees have been conducting the oversight role on various areas of service delivery in the region. The relevant committees will present their reports in the course of the next three days. We will discuss and appropriate action will be taken by executive. And to confirm mm. all this, that's why the president will be here tomorrow to hear the issues that are rising out of northern region. And remember, we've been budgeting for most of these activities. Now we need to understand whether there's value for money in whatever we have been appropriating money for. These reports, alongside with various motions, will be exhaustively deliberated upon by the House and resolutions will be passed and transmitted to the relevant government agencies or departments for action. Pursuant to Rule 220 of the Rules of Procedure, the House will require actions taken on the reports from relevant agencies of government on the status of implementation of the findings from these committees that have been on ground and from what we have discussed in this session. I therefore want to urge members of parliament from across the political divine to actively debate and deliberate on issues that are affecting this region. We can find a solution for the benefit and well-being of people of greater north. In the spirit of constructive engagement, we encourage all the stakeholders to desist from opposing progressive initiatives aimed at fostering cohesion and growth and embrace unity and cooperation in furtherance to inclusive decision making and progress. Unity is strength. Let us build Uganda that will work for everybody. You cannot be seen to fight a decision of sitting in an area or in Gulu, Gulu Kaunda grounds, where the Pope was in 1993, Gulu, which is in the history of history of in the map of political history of Uganda and you're saying we are boycotting well it has been boycotted but I see all the members of parliament here I salute you members of parliament honorable members over the last few weeks the motion 
the nation has had to contend with some of the difficulties, notably the loss of lives and destruction of property at the Kitesi garbage landfill in Wakiso district. We also had the demise of Professor Edward Kidu Makubia, a former member of this house who represented Katakamu South constituency and also a minister who served with distinct and different portfolios, including Minister of State for Luero Triangle, Minister of Education and Sports, Minister of Constitu Justice and Constitutional Affairs, and then Attorney General and Minister of General Duties in the office of the Prime Minister. May we rise and observe a moment of silence in the honor of the deceased. May their souls rest in eternal peace.